This podcast is sponsored by Screwfix, the suppliers of the world's first spring-loaded Pringles. You've got to spring the ping, haven't you? Welcome to the Daft Lad Podcast. I take no prisoners, just inmates, whatever that fucking means. Daft. Yeah, episode two. I've got a cold this week. I don't know if you can tell. You've not heard me speak yet until now, so you probably won't know. But um, I don't have the Omicron. This cold almost feels like I've got a litter picking snizzer. Right, me, right, me gizzard. Is that what you, what do you call a litter picking picker? I don't, I don't know what you call one of them. But I don't have the Omicron though, which is good. You know, I don't have that one again. Um, sounds like a really shifty shape. The Omicron, doesn't it? Sounds like one of those shapes that's got like twenty two sides that you learn in maths in school. Um. But yeah, welcome to episode two, you fucks. <laughs> Speaking about fucks, Peloton could get fucked. <laughs> what a segue. What a segue that was. I don't know if you've seen a Peloton, well, not seen, but heard a Peloton advert. They're the most hilarious, over-the-top, cringy adverts of all time. Try to do an impression of this. I don't know if you've heard one. Well, after this, go have a listen. You've got it, Peloton. <laughs> oh, it's really cringy, man. This is what 30 minutes of boot camp tastes like. Come on, Peloton. <laughs> it's, it's proper over the top. It's fucking shit. Check your vibe. It's time to grind. Peloton. <laughs> what the fuck came up with that? Some <laughs> nuts. <laughs> Here's what. This is another Peloton advert. It's more story based. Have a listen. How about a sunset ride with Kelly? Or going on an all out 80s ride with Leanne? And then Leanne just goes, Let's get ourselves going. <laughs> Oh, it's good to make yourself laugh. Fuck. Leanne can get fucked. It was buying one of them Peloton bikes anyway. Oh, bloody expensive. Uh, I'm just on the Peloton UK website. It's 2,500. F- wow. Good. Just get a fucking bike for 30 quid from Argos. Jesus Christ, man. Who's doing that? Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Yes, yes. I own a Peloton bike. Yes, yes, yes. Got to put it in my uh, 10 story house in Surrey. Um, <laughs> goes with a lo- alongside my. Peloton rowing boat because I'm a lazy. <laughs> Basically, Peloton is only fans for bikers. You know what I mean? Like, oh, look at the thread on that back tire, John. Oh, <laughs> if you've got to the point in life where you're like you're considering of buying a Peloton, I don't like you. Um, just go down to TK Maxx. You could probably get one. You know, just outside, or just go to Centre Parks and just steal a few. Just uh, it's mental technology, ruined it. Anyway, I'm going to move on now. Anyway, welcome to episode two of the Daft Lad podcast. It started off in a very good way to rip the shit into Peloton. Um, my name's Jamie, and I've got you covered. If you need any um, birthday presents, ideas, or wedding anniversary gifts, I've got you covered. I thought of a really good one. A petrol pump voucher. I don't know if you can get them for your local um, liquid vehicle supplier. Uh, I'm a big fan of Asda drive throughs petrol pump so it'd be class if you get like a 40 quid voucher for unleaded only you know what i mean unleaded only not like diesel crap that'd be class though if you open up your 50 way anniversary and and you've got a 30 quid voucher for unleaded that'd be class that petrol pumps are drive throughs they are drive throughs like a Mackey's drive through be class if they did serve food though or had a little vending machine at the side you know a large unleaded and a coke or a a medium unleaded with a side of chips. That'd be pretty decent. The only thing is with the drive through you can't go sit in. I know with drive throughs it's not meant for that, but with Mackies, you can go sit in. It'd be class that if the drive through you go put some unleaded in your car, get a drink from a vending machine that's just next to a petrol pump, and then you just send it into a car wash to go have a you know, sit in, plus you get your car washed, and you can have what? Ham, egg, and suds. Gap it market, gap it market there, gap it market. So here in the UK, um, we have a, a lovely shop, bakery's called Thomas's. There's another one called Coupland's, but Thomas's just beats it for the uh, crispier sausage roll. And I, I love sending it in there, on Main Street of where I live in my town. I love going in there for free sausage rolls, fantastic. So this this happens every time, because it's on a Main Street. You've got the, the local you know, cool kids, the chavs, the youths. You know, they've just got a mate who's, drove, who's just passed the driving test. 
They're like, oh, I'll just go downtown and send it really fucking fast. So every time I'm in Thomas's, you just hear this this car drive past with like four of the Acne boys in back, you know what I mean? So I'm just there, just, you know, saying in my head what I'm going to say to the uh, person behind, because I like to do that. Uh, free sausage rolls, can I have free sausage rolls, please? And then all of a sudden you just hear... <laughs> So yeah, you just hear this Corsa go from 0 to 30 in a 20 in the space of a second. It was a crap impression, but you know the type, it's almost like the aerial bombardment with uh, a couple of Evian empty bottles of water. But I just hear that Corsa drive past with the Acne boys in, and I just go outside and I just drop my sausage rolls. I actually, I give them back to fucking Linda in shop. I just say, Lind, have them back, I just need to go outside. And then just uh, look at the blaze of smoke and just clap like that. Fantastic, they're the coolest people I've ever known, ever seen. And I've never been more aroused. By that, uh, by the acne boys in that shitty car, sir. And sometimes you have to accept that there's just some people who are better than you in life, superior. Um, and you just got to move on and just accept it and uh, go get back in line and get some more sausage rolls. Fox on interlude. Let's sit this out. Uh, by the way, the reason why I say Fox on interlude. Foxhorn is the name of the band I'm in, and I'm just basically stealing the songs, parts of the songs, for interludes, because I don't want to make my own. We've already made some. I'm a, I can't get copper out of my old bloody songs, can I? Um, but yeah, my band's called Foxhorn. Uh, I play drums in it. Uh, we're off on tour in April, so if you want to come see us in the UK, they're off on tour. We've got an EP out as well, so there's nothing daft about that, but if you wanted to come and say hi and see us play... Um, and yeah, you can always come say hi to me and be daft, you know what I mean? So, so yeah, I mentioned at the top of the podcast that this uh, this episode is sponsored by Screwfix. Uh, they've been making these spring-loaded Pringles. They, they haven't really, that was all bullshit. I, me and my mate Tom, the guitarist in our band Fox on, we've, uh, we thought of this last year, a uh, spring-loaded Pringles, because you know you can't get your hand in when you get half full of the tub, or you're just like that, waving capsule around like that. Um, so we thought spring loaded so every time you take a few Pringles off the spring brings them up from the bottom I don't know if anyone can get in touch with Pringles and I can you know earn some cash on this and Tom can get fucked <laughs> it's really annoying because you like want to keep eating as you're eating you like put your hand in for another and then your hand gets stuck in it's basically putting hand in guttering can't you knuckle in guttering it I can't get my hand out obviously you don't want the spring too loaded you know you, you just open the pack of your Pringles, you just sit down, like, I'm going to watch Pirates of the Caribbean, eh? Oh, there's my chest, fantastic. Open it, boof! Pringles come flying at your cranium, and now you've got a Dead Man's Pringles tub. It'd be a great film, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Pringles tub, wouldn't it? As soon as you take the lid off, and then you've got that little, uh, it's almost like the end of a salad cream. Take it off, the little uh, packet thing, that holds all the air in, I don't know what I'm on about. As soon as you open it, Boof, noob tube, and you are now in space as the next Hubble telescope. Um, so you don't want too much spring on your spring loaded. Uh, I said that really. Spring. You want to smoke in a pancake? I guess if you don't want to use springs, you can just uh, you can get a bandsaw and uh, just cut the Pringle tube in half, or just put them out in a bowl. But it's more fun inventing shit. So if you've got any cool inventions or cool ideas for things, just send them in to my email, thedaftladpodcast at gmail.com, and, and I'll read some out if they're good enough, but if they're not, they're fucking shit. Right, Fox on interlude. Guess the impression. So yes, as the, uh, as a little spoiler there, this is the guess the impression part of the podcast. Obviously, I can't do impressions, but why the fuck not do it on my own podcast? Um, I was going to call it a different name. Uh, I've got a few here, I'm going to read them out. Calculate the impression. Reckon the impression. This was a close second. Estimate or conclude, in brackets something, without sufficient information to be sure of being correct. The impression. That was a definition of guess, by the way. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an impression. Uh, guess this from a famous film. Here we go. Here we go. Let me throw! That's my son! That's my boy! (laughs) 
Let me first. That's my son! That's my boy! That's my boy! That's my son! My boy! My boy! My boy! is giving a Harry Potter a choke. That's it, innit? He's like, tumbled on there and he's just going. That's fucking TV. My boy! My boy! Oh, that's some good acting. No! Mad Eye Moody's now taking Harry Potter to his uh, his bedroom. So I pretty much gave that away. That was uh, that was um, that was Legolas in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, that was uh, Dedrick Siggery's dad from Harry Potter: The Goblet of Fire, um, the greatest, the greatest Harry Potter film. Um, we all want to try it with a cup. It's a porky, Harry. <laughs> Why are we all stood around that monkey all boots? Harry Potter at the start of God, but if I... Uh, Why are we all stood around that monkey all boots? <laughs> get an haircut. I know I can't talk, but you might need an haircut, Matt Harry. You have to admire the orchestra in the back of that scene, though, you know. You, you never stop, even if uh, a few things go wrong on stage. You never stop, you know. Do, 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 do. My boy. There, there's also this is not guess the impression now, but again from the Goblet of Fire. It's why is the greatest film? It's got my boy, Harry going monkey all boot, and then this is the best part of the whole film is when they're picking out the names. They've picked out the first three, and then Harry's is about to come out. Comes out obviously. Dumbledore's like Harry Potter. He goes really American. Harry Potter. And then uh, Harry Harry has to get up because Hermione gives him a good smack by the fucking book. And, a boof. and then you see Harry walking up. Everyone's looking at him. And then he goes to Dumbledore. He's just like staring. He's like, <laughs> okay. And then he walks off. And then you hear this kid in background go, he's a cheat. <laughs> and then someone else goes, he's not even 17 yet. I bet that's some 14 year old acne chav in a corset. I bet he did that. Some year eight who thinks he's hard. Get fucks. Harry won it, mate. And Cedric died. Can't it. The Goblet. The Goblet of Fire. What a, what a film. I used to watch The Goblet of Fire. Every, pretty much every night as a kid on the portable DVD player. You know, portable. Got a Peloton on portable. Can you get a portable Peloton? Anyway, um, yeah, I used to eat that. Uh, not eat that. I used to watch that eating uh, salad cream sandwiches. Um, Fox or Interlude. Let's... <laughs> Someone, um, someone sent me this today, and it really hurt me. I had to block them. I'm going to read this out for you. Someone sent this. Dumplings imply the existence of a large dumple. What the fuck? What's that about? Why Why you send me that? And I, just, I simply blocked them. Uh, I blocked them on everything. It was my girlfriend of five years who so I had to block, but no one's saying me like that in life. Never again. Don't send me shit like that. Anyway, um, if anyone's been to a UK train station, they might have had an upper crust baguette. Um, I don't know if you've ever had one. I've always been tempted to buy one. Um, again, I don't own a Peloton bike, so I don't have that much cash to buy an upper crust baguette, but I'm always really tempted, aren't you? Like, I fucking look good. You always walk past. You've just got off your train. You're seeing all these vending machines that no one's ever going to use, apart from fucking it. I've never actually seen anyone use a vending machine at a train station. They're all dotting about in really stupid places. Like, put them outside each train door when people get off. Vending machine right there. You have to you have to buy something to get off. Class that. But yeah, I always walk past the upper crust baguettes. I'm like, oh. Oh, God. I'm frothing at the mouth like Frodo. But I'm not paying 20 quid for a French stick, you know what I mean? So yeah, if you've ever had one, let us know. Um, give, give us a message or call me mum. I don't know if you've had this um, when you're driving at night. Pitch black, obviously, because it's night time. Driving along, it's everything's normal. You got some tunes on, you got absolute radio on, whatever that shit is. Always playing Sam Fender and Foo Fighters. Hopefully Fox on. You know, I've got to promote it. You know what I mean? You're driving, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, literally, a car drives up over the hill. Blue headlights, instant archive. What's that about? Who has blue headlights? I know it might not be blue. 
but it's not the yellow <clears throat> bowl beam whitey colour that we're all used to. So about 99.9% of people have those uh, almost like a Yankee candle colour, basically a flame colour of headlight. All of a sudden, this fucking turd comes off a hill with WKD headlights. What they're doing? Oh, 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 I'm so different to everyone else with blue headlights. And I've got a Peloton bike as well. Fuck off. To be honest, I actually don't think it was the owner of the car who's made them blue. It's the Acne Boys from downtown earlier <laughs> when I went to go for sausage rolls. They got out at Corsa and have and seen this posh car and they've gone like, Hey boy, do you want to put some WKD into this headlight capsule? <laughs> Banter. That's daft, is that? You could give it a go. Fox on interlude. Here we go. Another banger. Right, on to the email section of the podcast. And uh, what I've read in this, I've got a true or false question from Greg Fallis. And he says, true or false, no one actually knows how to use a fire extinguisher. Um. Wow, that's, uh, I don't know how to use one. Uh, it's got some sort of pin in it, hasn't it? It's like a pin that you put in a, in hair that keeps it up. Half down, half up at back, in it. I don't know, do you take it out? I don't know, I've not really... Anyway, this question is from Paul Squirt. And he says, would you rather put a handful of veet onto a cat's face, for a daft laugh... <laughs> Or have a KFC in the back of a DPD van. Uh, Veet is hair removal cream, if you didn't know. Uh, oh, tough one, that, Paul. Um, surely everyone's dream is to have a Taco Bell in the back of an Eddie Stobart lorry. But uh, that's not happening anytime soon, is it? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to go with putting a handful of uh, Veet onto a cat's face. That's a great question there, Paul. Um Greg Fallis, I didn't like that true or false question because I didn't understand it, so I didn't like it. But uh, Paul Square, you're nothing but daft. You get the audio quote. It's the Paul Bollywood handshake that we all want in life. And uh, Paul Square gets it. Email, send them in. Your funny questions, true or false, is to the daft lad podcast at gmail.com. Or find me on the social media um, at the daft lad podcast. So you can find me there, uh, OnlyFans as well. Fox on interlude, there we go. The we can save the Tell you what, these people who sit in Costa on the laptop, what's that about? Have you seen this? I like to speak about relatable stuff on the podcast so everyone can relate to it. Ooh. These people just sat there having like a sausage bap, typing away, hacking into mainframe, getting bat crumbs. All over the keyboard numbers and letters. What's that about? Even more crazy than that, you know, going on a laptop in a cafe. They leave the laptop on the table and go for a pee. Even worse in Costa, you're going to be longer because you've got to go do bloody Easter egg code for the toilet. What's that? You have to get a code from the bar. It's not, it's not a bar in Costa. The staff to go for a pee. Like, I don't want to talk to anyone, let alone go up to the bar again. I mean, what is it, the till area, and talk to someone again and say, uh, can I have the code for the loo, please? What's that? So he's left his laptop out there. He or she's left a laptop out there on the table, gone for a pee, can't get in because there's no one behind bloody bar. So he's got to sort of do like an Easter egg, a skate room to figure out the bloody pin code to go for a dump. What's that about? So yeah, I don't know who these people are who are that content with life, that safe and trustworthy of humans to go for a wee and leave the laptop out and come back like, ah, yeah, back to it, back to it, hacking into the mainframe. I bet these people don't actually live in a house. Well, they do. They bought a house. They've got everything in it laid out. They've got the inside structure. Then they thought, fuck it. I'm going to take the brick down, the rafters down, the canopy of the house, and it's just the inside that you can see walking down. So you're just walking down the street. You can just see someone just there watching bloody... Not the week, you know what I mean? Just with foot up. We can just see him. Rick's gone. Fair play, like, I shit myself when I can't find me Mickey Mouse rolling pin in my own house. Let alone a laptop in Costa. 
Uh, so, segue, I went to Tempin Berlin with Lance last week. Had a right laugh, daft laugh. Tempin Berlin, few arcades. We are 25, and we're still fucking cool, all right? Played on the arcade machines after. Uh, did the punching thing. I've never done punching before. Uh, what's it? The punch bag. Never done the punching thing. I've never punched anyone. And uh, I got a score of 36 because I've completely missed it, which is pretty embarrassing. And then uh, we went on air hockey, and uh, we're on other team. It's that air hockey one which has four players, so after like a minute, loads of the small hockey pucks fall down. And uh, as we were smacking them back through Double Glaze's window at bottom, he kept picking them up and yeeting them at us, which was uh, pretty deadly. Uh, so that's how wild our Monday got after work last week, nearly getting chucked out of temp in Berlin. Then we sent it to uh, to Mackey's, got a Mackey's, went twice, and uh, we, we got a drive through and on, on the way out, I was driving. And you can't beat an emergency stop with lads after a Mackey's, can you? You know what I mean? Like, you're just driving out of Mackey's. You've got the twat who's done... You know, shotgun! Yeah, yeah. You fucking sit there, mate. Wait till you get your milkshake out. Straw next to his face. Speed bump's about to come. I'm going to go a bit faster, maybe 30. And then full send emergency stop. Boof! Milkshake. Straw down his gizzard. Choking. That's a daft laugh. That's daft. I love that kind of stuff. Did that a few times, actually. Um, my driving instructor would have been proud. There's a few emergency stops there. I was just testing brakes, and then we maybe a mile away from Mackey's, we, we drove to the motorway. And as we came to the junction, before we got onto the motorway, this Mackey's bottle came flying above the rafters of the car onto the windscreen wipers. What the fuck? It was like full. It was like strawberry milkshake. So I just put the windscreen wipers off. Went off. Absolutely pissing ourselves. Um. The lad sat next to me who was throwing the uh, yeety pucks and also who's got a straw down his gizzard at the same time. He said, if we had that on top of our car that past mile, going around roundabouts, off at bumps, doing emergency stop. We're fucking pissing ourselves for like five minutes. Then we got back you know, half an hour later and uh, it was Joe in the back seat who just uh, opened a window and yeeted it onto the front of the car. I found that pretty funny. Then we dropped Summers off, who was the guy who's got yeah, he straw down his gullet. He maybe got like a 500-yard walk down his lane in this field to his house. So we dropped him off at the end of his lane. And uh, I just drove off onto the country lane like you normally do. Headlights on, it was dark. And then I was like, right, I'm going to stop. He's, he's probably got 250 yards down his lane now, which is half. And uh, I thought, lads, I'm just going to turn around, go to the end of his lane... I'm going to turn off my lights um, down his private lane. You know, I'm not going to do that on middle of the road. And uh, I was slowly driving up behind him about two miles an hour with lights off. Then all of a sudden you just saw this because he had his phone flashlight on. Just see his light go, <clears throat> turn around. So I just turned off the car and just we just stood and watched him. It's fucking hilarious. And then I waited about five minutes and his flashlight turned forward again. <laughs> and I just put full beam on, car on. Sent it down pothole, probably wheels are fucked, but that was funny. Funny was that, that five minutes of laughing uncontrollably is what you need in life. And it was daft, so it's perfect story for the podcast. So that's about it for episode two. I'm just going to leave you with this. Um, don't go yet. This is a very important message. It's a fact, a lovely quote as well to take into your life. So here we go. The difference between a body bag and a sleeping bag is the state of the person inside. Fantastic. That's episode two of the Daftland podcast. I'm off to Screw Fix to buy some Pringles. So I'm going to see you in the next one. See you.